So in today's video, we are going to see how to launch an AWS EC2 instance. I, I'm just going to make another trial on our video and see, I actually already uh, ran one a while back, never came back to it. So I will go add the end to it. But right now, all you have to do is once you have logged into your console, look for launch a virtual machine or EC2 uh, there is another one like uh, this one that uh, maybe you are so used to that it has every service listed here it's your preference wherever you want to start there's like console home <coughs> I think this one is a little bit neat uh, for new beginners so let's click on EC2 so you can see that uh, this is the one that I talked about. It's already running. We're going to get back to this one at the end of the video. For our purpose to start a new one, we're going to click on Launch Instance over here. By default, my zone is going to be Ohio Launch Instance. Over here, we there are different instances that we can run, like different um, virtual machines. Uh, the AMI stand for Amazon Machine Image. Uh, there is Linux, Red Hat, SUSE, Ubuntu, Windows Server, database instances are for relational database. So they say that if you are into that, rather than to launch a virtual machine, launch a virtual uh, RDS. So there is Windows Server 2019 with this SQL Server and all this 2017, 19 Enterprise Standard. And if we keep going down, free tier eligible Windows Server 2004. Four, wow. Okay. Uh, 16 base is uh, uh, also free tier eligible. So if you are into like uh, learning. Uh, Active Directory, you can come in on one of those and do your work. There is a with SQL Server. So there are a ton of uh, operating system over here that you can run on one of these virtual machine and uh, access them. We will, I, 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 sh I will try this Windows once um, in an upcoming video. So you can see, we keep going down it's just a handful of uh, operating system that we can try but for our purpose let's go with the uh, first one amazon linux 2 ami let's see what it is free tier eligible t2 we're gonna go with that oh so <clears throat> that was the uh, eligibility so uh, if you don't know yeah, you can sign up for aws and they give you uh some free stuff totally for free uh you never get charged even though they get do get your card details so uh this one for example you can see it's saying 750 hours if you calculate it it's more than a month so every month you are getting this 750 hours totally free you can run this machine 24 7 and you will never get charged anything and I will show you later on when I uh, started my machine and I, I haven't been charged anything yet so but make sure that whatever you're running it's uh, totally free because there are some things that are uh, partially free and there are some things that are try to free and after that uh, the charge will incur so for example this is use it here is for 12 months so don't think uh, it's forever <clears throat> let's go to configuring instance details um, these are like instances uh, for example number of instances how many virtual machine you want to run just one right now and purchase option network VP is virtual private virtual private uh, VPC let me find out so VPC is Virtual Private Cloud. 
and it will be like a box that uh, your <coughs> instances your virtual machines they will be inside that box and they will, uh, they will not be able to go or communicate outside without your approval subnet uh, if you're in networking you will know what it is like you can do uh, there are the zones as well you see us 2a 2c 2b so like uh, what subnet you want to have your machine inside auto sign public ip address you can enable or disable domain join directory if you want if you have a do domain uh, uh, machine up and running over here you can connect it over here so the role is none CP option you can specify and see how many core you want and threads per core for example uh, for example uh, they say eight uh, when you read about any new CPUs it says eight cores to th two threads so it's uh, it's 16 or you know eight to raised to power four something like that not raised to power eight by four <coughs> So we're gonna go number of virtual cpus we're gonna keep it over here shutdown behavior like when you click on shutdown what happens it's terminate itself completely gone erases itself or it's just stops and then you can restart it stop hibernate behavior termination protection accidental termination like if you have running some custom script on that machine what uh, uh, you want to protect that from terminating the machine because once the machine is terminated everything is gone so if uh, that machine or the data on that uh, or the script or whatever is running over there it's that is important to you you might want to check this option monitoring is uh, monitor your machine and then uh, send you prompts about health or you know uh, usage or bandwidth all that share tenancy like uh, is it a dedicated instance or it's a shared instance or the host is dedicated or shared all that elastic interference elastic is uh, elasticity is that uh, it comes with load balancing what uh, it does is that uh, if your machine is getting um, so much demand it, aws will spin another one on your behalf you can set it up <coughs> so credit specification that uh, how much you want to go above so you want to go unlimited then you don't care about the money you just want to make sure that your service is up and running away and available 24-7 so that's for that but for our purposes we're not gonna mess any of these settings file system is we can create a file system we can name it and it's right now it's Amazon Amazon EFS file system uh, there's a console we will get to each one of them um, gradually advanced detail we don't have to worry about uh, them right now user data is very important user data is that uh, if you if you <coughs> if you um, have worked on Linux you know that uh, we uh, do a lot of work on terminal and you you have to run like those or in Windows 2 you run scripts and you run uh, and for the most common or most used script you we write those batch files so this is the area where we'll place that code and as soon as the machine runs it will run the script and initiate or you know install it onto our machine next is add storage we're gonna keep it uh, simple by keeping everything to default and SSD GP2 I believe it's uh, oh that's IOPS uh, read and write so size is 8 GB that I was looking for so it's 8 gigabits uh, uh, SSD pretty uh, low I would say but uh, you can't complain about free stuff right add tags so tags is, is it's just like uh, we add tags to our uh, blogs or posts or <coughs> YouTube videos it is to find um, 
different machines or instances easily so for uh, right now you know we are we are only running one so we don't care but imagine um, an enterprise where they have tons of uh, machines running and there are multiple people working on it so how they will know which instance um, running which program or what script so tags is a great way to add to them the next one is configure security group again it's just like that in the domain when uh, on the server we select those so it has to be done um, by uh, admin and they will be listed all over here or you can create a new one name it and just do your settings now we can review and in the review we will see all what we have selected before we get to launch it you we can see this amazon linux 2 mi it's a t2 that's what we selected tcp 22 if you remember the past screen uh, on security group that was it if we go to um, storage it's a gb so basically this is is the final screen before uh, you can make any changes or launch it <coughs> i'm not gonna launch this one because i already have one running and i don't wanna uh, incur charges so let's go to that one um, and ec2 you see instances running so i'm gonna click on it it says running the status is running check is good and if i go all the way here launch time i launched this instant on 23rd august uh, 2020 so about i would say about uh, three months ago i haven't been charged anything uh the thing is when i try to click on uh, where is that uh, ip address so this ip address if i connect let's see this is probably the console hmm yes so i'm connected to it now i was on linux 2 and i can run or work on it let's run that sudo yum update there are 65 updates available and it's gonna run all those updates on my machine that's been running for three months there are 64 upgrades available total download size is 95 megabits and if it's this okay i can click y or for yes and no for and for no i'm gonna click no yes and it's doing its thing so that machine is now being updated So the cleanup is in process and you get you see this is the terminal window inside a browser it's pretty cool so we're gonna get back to see that oh verifying oh there is my command prompt okay so everything is uh, complete i'm gonna get back to that instance page and I'm gonna click here and I want to show you this cool thing if uh, you click on your instance you can either connect but you can check the stat you can stop it uh, sorry check the state you can stop the instance or you can reboot it as well from here or you can terminate terminate means it's gone so you don't want to I, I don't want to do it at this point we can connect we can view details instance state setting networking all that good stuff we can create an image as well so all the editing like if later on we want we want we need to change something we can come and select it and from the action menu we can change all that pretty cool so, so shutdown behavior was you can see shutdown is to stop or terminate we went through that so 
from here you don't have to go back and start a new one you can simply edit this one and make it work for you so this is it i'm going to wrap this video here if you have uh, learned something out of it if you like this video please rate comment subscribe and share and i'll see you in the next one